I would like to introduce Kent Watson and Chen Wu, who will be presenting IAB Network Management Workshop 2024. Kent is a software architect at Watson Networks and traveled from Washington, D.C. metro area to join us today. This is Kent's first time presenting at NANOG, and it's a pleasure to have him speaking with us today. Welcome, Kent and Chen. OK, I really can't see people too well, but how many people uh, know about the ITF? Raise your hand. OK, that's most of the, most of the room. How, be, how about the IAB? Raise your hand. OK, not as many people, so let's start with that. The uh, IAB, the Internet Architecture Board, uh, is putting on a workshop, the next era of network management operations. The program committee for this board uh, is con con is composed of members of the IAB itself, as well as the IETF ops area uh, chairs, and the NMOP working group chairs. The NMOP stands for Network Management Operations Working Group, as well as yours truly, the NetConf and NetMod Working Group Chair. Um, and since many of you didn't know about the IAB, uh, Chen, who's a member of the IAB, is going to introduce it for you. Yeah, thank you for Ken for kind of introduction. So IAB as an you know, Internet Architecture uh, Board, actually you can see the, in the right figure, it is uh, positioned you know, in the uh, top left of this uh, figure, actually connect to the right box, the RTF, the below box is IETF. So, RTL more focused on long-term research work, and IETL focused on short-term protocol engineer work. So IAB can provide architecture uh, oversight for both IETF work and uh, RTF work. And under the umbrella of the IETF, you can see you know, like break down uh, several area, and each area can be managed, uh, you know, a bunch of working group. And in today's talk, we only focus on operation and management. And in addition, actually, you will see, you know, IAB also responsible for you plan and organize and run workshop. So, for example, they can address, you know, uh, you know, uh, the current challenge and uh, to explore the emerging the, the technologies. The most important thing it can create, you know, input for future worker uh, within the IETF or RTF. One of the example, you know, today we, we are here to introduce this. Uh, Name of the workshop, new IB workshop. This really want to solve the feedback. This feedback can, you know, uh, can be the basis for the future work in ITF. In addition, you know, uh, IAB also responsible for to plan and organize the IB program, and uh, it target to you know address a long term you know issue, long term perspective. But unlike the IAB uh, workshop, IAB program can be the perm permanent. It can be scheduled you know periodically. For example, three times every year. You know, co-located with each IETF meeting. In addition, IAB also can you know uh, encourage more collaboration with many uh, various different uh, uh, standard body and uh, operator community, user community through the liaison coordination and IAB reach out effort. Yeah, that's it. Get back okay, to thanks, you. Chen. Yeah. Um, so, I'd like to jump to the end. Why are we here? So, it's really threefold. First, we wish to announce that the IAB is conducting a workshop on the next era of network management operations. This will be conducted in uh, December 3 through 5, so three days, roughly two to three hours each day. And everyone here is invited. Uh, there will be details about how to come at the end of the slide. Additionally, we wish to kindly request your filling out the IAB NMOP survey. So there's a little QR code in the corner. Don't try to point your camera at it just yet. At the end of the slide will be a much larger version of it that you can point your camera at. And then lastly, to request your attendance at the 75-minute breakout session that's occurring immediately following the upcoming break. This is in the Harbor Room C, which if you don't know, you have to go to the conference level across the Sky Bridge and to the left, uh, way down the hall on the left-hand side. So this is the NANOG uh, mission statement. I love this mission statement. Working together to build the Internet of tomorrow. The working together is so uh, enigmatic of this presentation. And of course, building the Internet of tomorrow sounds much like the IETF uh, goal of making the Internet better. So working together, I mean, this should be easy because we're the same. I was looking at the NANOG website, and I was, it, you know, it impressed upon me that the pictures I was seeing there looked identical to the pictures I would see on an ITF website. So I decided to grab a, you know, this montage is 50% from NANOG uh, website and 50% for ITF. I no longer know <laughs> which is which. They're the same. The thing is that we all have the same cultures. We have our gray beards, purple hairs, you know, coffee and buttons and puzzles. But uh, also, we have the same purpose and goals, right? The vision of making the internet better. 
So working together, historically, IETF has had a long tradition of collaborating with NANOG. Uh, we listened to operator concerns when developing new protocols. We explored technology and operational issues on IETF work. And uh, to, bridge a, uh, to build a bridge, to bridge the gap between IETF work and real world depl deployments. But the IETF wants to better understand the operator issues. But concerningly, operators are not well currently well represented in the ITF. Operator voices are not well heard. To address this, the IAB is, has created the InMOPS program committee that published a survey, the QR code I mentioned earlier, that is currently collecting responses. So please submit your response, uh, ideally in a couple weeks, but even up until the workshop itself is okay. Uh, also, the program committee is reaching out to operators, such as us here today with you, uh, but also other operator uh, conferences that are occurring, such as LACNOG, AutoCon, Apricot, et cetera. And the program committee will synthesize the survey results before the workshop into a position paper, so that will feed right into the workshop. And then lastly, the program committee will conduct the inbox workshop itself in December and publish a workshop report. I just want to mention how important it is to working together. And here's a showcase. As chair of the NetConf working group, in 2020, several operators came and started to engage to improve the status of telemetry collection. The background to this is that in 2019, RFC 8639, which stands for Subscriptions to Yang Notifications, was published. But it only defined support for dynamic subscriptions. It wasn't any support for configured subscriptions. Like the device rebooted. What would it do? So this was insufficient for these operators. Their goals were to be able to configure subscriptions, to receive telemetry data over UDP, to send telemetry from line cards, to annotate telemetry with metadata, and to import telemetry into a time series database. The current NetConf working group status is that one of these drafts is currently in post NetConf working group last call, which means it's imminently to be published as RFC. Two drafts are about to enter working group last call, and three drafts are about to be adopted. So I'll hand it back to Jim to discuss uh, something that happened in the past. Yeah. <clears throat> for the first IB workshop, you know, uh, I have to confess that I'm not, you know, witness uh, for this uh, in the first IB workshop. But uh, I do a lot of study, actually. You know, for this uh, first IB workshop, you know, uh, way back to 20 years ago, you know, we faced a crisis. You know, the, uh, it's a network management crisis. You know, you see uh, uh, quite a, lot, a bunch of, you know, contention ma network management technology that has been developed, uh, such as, you know, SMP, you know, it's quite old, and COPS, uh, is another one, and uh, at that time, there's quite a lot of debate and discussion around protocol design. And for example, uh, uh, you know, whether uh, you know, we should use uh, stuff over HTTP, whether we should XML as an encoding format, and uh, sh uh, should uh, you know, scalability SMP uh, look like. And to really uh, address the challenge, you know, uh, settle the site meeting in various different venue has been you know, planned and organized around 2001. Uh, you know, target to you know uh, various different you know operator communities such as Riper, Nanlogger, and Lisa, and some operator in this signing meeting you know uh, express that you know the uh, development in the IETF doesn't uh, address their real requirements. For example, you know you, uh, it doesn't have you know concrete you know configuration management network uh, monitoring is too complex, and they, this actually lead to the first IB workshop on network management in 2002. Next, and. Uh, Actually, uh, in the first, in, in this workshop, actually, this uh, really came out a bunch of the operator requirements and recommendations, and this has been well documented in RFC 3535. And uh, this RFC provides an overview of the first IAB uh, workshop on network management. Uh, you can see actually, uh, you know, 14 requirements uh, and eight recommendations has been, you know, well, you know, uh, uh, discussed in this RFC. Actually, I want to highlight three of these uh, operator requirements. For example. Easy of use uh, is a key requirement for any network management technology. This is actually crucial. It's really determining you know, uh, whether this technology is easy integrated or deployed. The second requirement is really make a clear distinction between the configuration data and the data that describe operational data and statics. And this is also you know, uh, very interesting, actually, because not only it applied the year before 2002, but also it applied today, actually. 
we really uh, still we separate the conversion data from you know uh, operating uh, state data actually. In the past, we used you know uh, you know two different data model, two model these uh, carry different uh, these two two different type of data. But now we use one single model to do that. The third requirement is you know allow operator to really focus on you know um, uh, the conversion of the network as a whole instead of uh, individual device. Uh, this is actually also the turn point, or I would consider this a really a milestone actually uh, drive you know moving from uh, manually provision to the network managing automation. And regarding the recommendation, we want to highlight two uh, recommendations. The first is, you know, due to the lack of, you know, network programmability, network uh, openings uh, of SMP. So IETF discourages publish, you know, writable MIB module. So at that time, it should be decision of uh, the working group whether they want to provide a writable object. The second uh, recommendation actually really build a strong consensus for both protocol developer and operator. Uh, that is, you know, IETF should invest more resources for standardization of compression uh, management mechanism. So this lead to the development of network protocols. Okay, so that was the workshop that occurred 20 years ago. And the outcomes from that workshop were you know, tremendous. Uh, many technologies were developed. This word cloud, you'll probably recognize a lot of uh, acronyms and words. Yang, RESTConf, NetConf. NMDA, which stands for the Network Management Data Store Architecture, Call Home, SCTP, which stands for Secure Zero Touch Provisioning. Um, of course, Yang Library, I mean, it's also very important and, and uh, fundamental to how we manage networks these today. But also importantly, the IETF working groups have been working together uh, within the IETF and, and uh, operators to, to develop a cohesive collection of Yang data models. So it's not just that we developed the Yang data modeling language, but also some data models. And these data models are being developed both at the element level and the service level. And by element level, of course, I mean that the models are for the configuring of the devices themselves, whether it be the router or switch or firewall. And service level is more of the models that would be used inside the controller or the orchestrator, right? Um, a little bit off script, and, uh, off script, but I don't have any slides. But I know that you're very uh, interested in service level models. Can you say a little bit about why they're important? Yeah, service level model is quite important. You know, today actually IETA invests invest quite a lot of time resource uh, in the device level uh, model development. And uh, however, this device level model doesn't scale. And in many cases, when you you know deliver a service, uh, you no, you don't know whether there's some, you know, you know, device level missing actually. So really, to address the requirements, actually, IETF, uh, you know, uh, uh, proposed like you know, dedicated work, uh, operator driven working group, and uh, you know, like uh, L3SM, L2SM, actually, they focus on you know, developer uh, service uh, model for l 3 VPN and l 2 VPN. And at that time, actually, I'm very fortunate actually to be uh, chair of these uh, two working group. And uh, the good outcome is not only this uh, service model get standardized, uh, but also it get uh, you know uh, test implement in the Intag multi vendor interoperability test by many uh, vendors. Actually, this uh, actually used by many vendor as a reference model. Okay, so that's a quick snapshot of what happened uh, in the last 20 years, but where are we at today? Uh, and I'll just pick on a few working groups. Uh, the NetConf working group, for instance, is currently working to update the NetConf and RESTConf protocols to include support for things like list pagination and transaction correlation and transports for telemetry data, uh, as well as Yang data models for the configuration of NetConf and RESTConf clients and servers. In the NetMod working group, they're looking to update the Yang data modeling language to support things like semantic versioning, as well as a new data store of, for, called the System Data Store, and flags such as the immutability flag. And there's so much more. This is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the work that's going on in those two working groups. There's also a new working group, the IV working group, the inventory working group. They're working on um, Yang data models for how to support inventory management and uh, topology correlation, much to support, for instance, the digital twin and digital map type concepts. And there's another new working group called the InMOP working group, the Network Management Operations Group. And they're focused on Yang push integration, anomaly detection, and incident management. And then lastly, another uh, working group, and of course there's many more working groups, but this is an interesting one. Uh, there's the Green Working Group, which is working on service level gang models for energy use and efficiency related metrics. But how well are these technologies consumed, right? I mean, if you build it, they will come. That's the dream, isn't it? In a perfect world, the IETF creates standard protocols with operator input, and they work great. Deployment and operation con operator concerns are consistently addressed. The level of operator engagement is balanced with vendors and academics. 
Operators always know when their input is needed, and they always provide it when it's needed. But the reality is that operator engagement is not balanced with vendors and academics today. Academics and vendors rule the decision-making process within the ITF. Operators are expected to deploy these technologies, often don't even know that they're being developed. Critical new technologies are developed with little to no director, uh, direct operator input, and things may be an option or are broken, <laughs> so not too good. So why the disconnect? On screen, you'll see three major phases of network operations lifecycle. Yeah, the architecture phase, the engineering phase, and the operations phase. In the lower left, you'll see the ITF contributes strongly to the engineering phase, right? Where the engineers, where the ITF is the engineers. In the lower right is the network operator groups, such as the NANOG community, where the operations and the ones are consuming these technologies and, and maintaining them. The problem is that there's a long time delay between these two phases, uh, sometimes measured in, in, the, in decades. So understanding this disconnect, the Internet Society, which I think Jen mentioned uh, the IAB reports up to, uh, conducted a survey called Operators and the IETF. Some results from that survey. Um, so, some, easy, some issues are easy to solve. And uh, in fact, they're so easy to solve, the next two slides will solve them for you. <laughs> but 58% per, uh, of the operators didn't know how to participate with the ITF. 54% of operators were not aware that ITF work happens on mailing list. 8% of operators did not know the ITF, uh, what the ITF does. Right? Uh, some other issues are harder to solve. So for instance, 64% of operators don't have enough time to engage. Right? They, don't even, they, can't, they don't have the time to come. 44% um, of operators don't feel that their input is welcomed. So I just want to squash that one right here. Please, your input is welcome. Uh, please help us uh, make the internet better. Um, so to answer, to resolve some of those easy questions quickly, uh, how to participate in the ITF the, for the 58% that didn't know or weren't aware about the mailing list, be aware that all work in the ITF takes place in working groups. Working groups are clustered into areas. Participation is open to any in interested individual. No fee, due, or affiliation is required to join. Just simply subscribe to a mailing list. Work happens on mailing lists. All work happens on mailing lists. And remote meeting participation is possible. So there are three in-person meetings every year, but you can re connect to uh, remotely and even present remotely, or even chair remotely, as I, would, as I did during the pandemic. Um, also, actively engage, right? So it's not just uh, lurking, but send emails and review documents and you know, whatnot. Uh, that's how you can participate in ITF. Also, not knowing, uh, for the 8% that don't know what the ITF does, from RFC 3935, here are the goal and mission statements, right? The goal of the ITF is to make the internet better. And the mission statement is uh, the mission of the ITF is to produce high quality, relevant technical and engineering documents that influence the way people design, use, and manage the internet in such a way to make the internet work better. These documents include protocol standards, best current practices, and informational documents of various kinds. Okay, so IB. Yeah, let's get back to the you know the focus of today's discussion. You know, uh, 22 years ago, actually, we have first IB workshop. Now, IB want to organize organize another workshop on network management. So this is really a good opportunity to make operators work together with. Uh, IETF. You know, after 20 years development, it's time to review where we are. And it's time to, you know, take a top-down and four-picture approach and to really see, you know, uh, the long-term uh, trend and uh, objective. And also, it need to, you know, figure out, you know, uh, what is the trajectory we try to get, actually. It's a wide spectrum why network management protocol can be used across a set of IETF protocol. Uh, either it can be used to manage a BGP protocol or be used to uh, manage the web server, or it can be used to manage, uh, you know, billions of uh, IoT device or everything else, you name it, actually. And uh, you uh, will see, actually, uh, um, re this uh, really, uh, you know, we want to go, to go for. And uh, so for this uh, uh, workshop, we, uh, you know, have uh, three uh, objectives we really want to focus on. And uh, the first is to review the outcome and results of the first IB workshop, and really to un identify the operation barrier, for, uh, you know, that prevent the technology from being widely deployed. For example, some operator, we have a conversation with, uh, they raise a big concern for the complexity of integration. 
you know, for example, it takes days or weeks uh, to you know, uh, connect or aggregate uh, uh, and correlate various different type of data. The second object we want to set is to explore new requirements uh, for future network management uh, operation. And for example, uh, where should we take it from here? Which requirements did the operator miss? Which requirements uh, are really unfulfilled? And then we can document a set of these requirements and recommendations in a new ITF specification and plan a set of action that can you know, uh, work for both network operator and uh, uh, protocol developers. And uh, how to participate, actually? We offer uh, three options. Actually, these three options, you know, do not exclude from each other. You can, you know, um, you know, uh, take these three options, you know, as a whole, actually, to make three these kind of contribution. We are very welcome, actually. Also, you can choose one or two of these three options. And for this first option, uh, if you are here, actually, in the analog, I think uh, uh, you can contribute today, actually. We have breakout sessions. And uh, uh, just uh, you know, right a bit, uh, after this uh, you know, uh, general session, please join us in the Hub C. Uh, following this upcoming break, actually, this uh, Hub C, you know, you need to go across uh, the sky bridge to the hotel side. You will find this uh, uh, Hub C uh, room. And for second option is, uh, you know, uh, you can submit uh, your uh, survey to the, you know, uh, the, the our and, and also survey uh, online. Actually, the, we provide a QR code in the. Next slide, actually, this uh, survey feedback, you know, for each individual will be aggregated into a report and, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, produce a one position paper. This will be served as an input to the, this workshop. So please submit your response to this online survey, and we appreciate it. The third option is, uh, you know, provide uh, to participate in workshop uh, itself, even actually it's an online call, actually, we strong recommend that you participate in this kind of workshop. Actually, you can either submit your position paper, you know, uh, based on the workshop topics, or you can submit your short expression interest into the uh, program committee um, mailing list. Uh, we also want to, uh, you know, uh, remind you, actually, this workshop will be recorded and will be made public uh, uh, after we complete this workshop. So this uh, last page, actually, uh, we, in the right, we have you know, a QR code for this IBNM officer survey. Actually, please uh, take out uh, your mobile phone, your iP iPad, and camera to scan this barcode, actually, and to help to uh, you know, fill this survey. But please, uh, uh, you can hold on this uh, survey question, go through all these questions, because we have breakout session. We'll uh, clarify how to fill this uh, survey. And, uh, so uh, very appreciate, and we list a bunch of resources. If you uh, want to know the detail about uh, what is this workshop about, actually, please uh, you know take a look at this workshop date, data tracker page, and also we have contact information. Actually, uh, you provide you actually pro program committee mailing list, uh, and you can send the paper to this uh, mailing list. In addition, we have uh, NM Ops interest mailing list that is used. Uh, for the general uh, announcement. So that's it. Please consider attending the workshop. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, I just want to add quickly, uh, we didn't talk about this before, but it, this is the opportunity, right? A once in 20 year opportunity, basically, uh, to help the ITF collect requirements for the next era of network management. So please uh, contribute. And we do have some time, uh, five minutes for Q&A. Of course, the uh, breakout session that occurs after, there'll be much more time for Q&A, but maybe not everyone can join us for that. Any questions? OK. Well, <laughs> um, well. anyway, please, again, join us in Harbor Sea after the break across the Sky Bridge. Uh, Warren has uh, uh, volunteered to sign badges. And so if you <laughs> wish to have a signed badge, you'll, Warren's kind of volunteered. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Kent and Ken. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.